Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming channel brave enough to ask, hey, don't you guys have $100,000? Oh yeah, we're getting in on the action because apparently that's what <laughs> Blizzard Entertainment asked all of us by releasing Diablo Immortal, whose aggressive monetization has shocked even their most cynical fans. I am so shocked and so cynical that I'm recording from New York. I had to make sure I, I would record this episode because I am so upset by the... <laughs> microtransactions of Diablo Immortal. Uh, that's actually got the gamers out here memeing on Dinero Immoral. That was the laugh, that, that's, that's where you laugh. Knockout blow. Yeah, and expressing their frustrations in the uh, usual way. Diablo Immortal is now tied with World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic for the lowest Metacritic user score across all their games, 0 0.5. <laughs> but it's also kind of good and fun. Yeah. It is. Blizzard made a really good and free Diablo game. That sentiment is better reflected through the game's rating on mobile stores, sitting at 3.5 stars on Google Play and 4.6 on the Apple App Store. Lawrence, you and I have played the game, both of us, and I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. It's well made sugar. Kind of a tale of uh, two video games out there on the internet. Some people are playing a new, good, and free Diablo game while others see an insulting, comically monetized hollow grind that exists to milk whales for all the whale milk they have to give. Mm, oh boy, when, when that whale milk pops, it flows, that's for sure. <laughs> There's also the other factor here, and what might explain the, the passion behind the response is all the longtime Blizzard fans that are really sad to see the company do exactly what they thought would never happen, and what they thought is the opposite of what the company stands for make a bare ass pay to win Diablo game. It turns out everybody needs to make money. Uh, so what exactly has players so upset? Uh, Reddit user Damien summarized it pretty well in a Reddit post from last month, estimating that it would cost $100,000 to max out the stats on a piece of in-game loot. Damien has since revised this estimate down to fifty dollars to $80,000. Well, that's not so bad. <laughs> Much more affordable. Yeah, not so bad. Uh, based on adjustments to progression in the last month, but still, what the fuck? That's a new height, and it's about to get to a new low, too. And as usual, this is a mobile game, so it's never so simple as just pouring money into the game and having fun or getting rewards directly in return. So in an effort to show just how ridiculous this whole system is, we're gonna describe it. So buckle up and get ready to understand Diablo Immortal's monetization. This is actually just one small part of it, by the way. It, it's so it's so insane. It's impossible. We I played eight hours of this game, I still don't know. Uh, so. It's technically true that you can't buy gear or rank it up using real money. Uh, instead, you spend real money on these stat boosting gems that go into that gear, kind of. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Like other Diablo <laughs> games, the in-game economy here is all about jewelry. The best of which, legendary gems, you get by playing through rifts, which are procedurally generated dungeons. They're in about five minutes, like pretty obviously tuned around a mobile play session. You jump in, you kill some monsters, you kill a boss, and then you pop a treasure chest at the end and get all your sweet loot. Makes sense, easy enough. Yeah, uh, you'll never get a legendary gem just playing normal rifts. So to even have a shot at getting that gear, you gotta use crests. Oh my gosh, uh, which amplify the rewards of a dungeon. Basically, it's a loot box. You have a random chance to get rare drops. You just got to play through a Diablo dungeon first. Yeah, there are also two kinds of crests. This is only just starting, so you better stretch out. We got a rare crest and a legendary crest. All right, rare crests only give you a 5% chance to drop a legendary gem, while legendary crests have a 100% chance. You will get a legendary gem. Problem is there's no way to grind for either of those crests. Immortal tosses a handful of rare crests at you a day and you get one legendary crest for free a month. Anything else, any more than that, and you gotta pay. Yeah, uh, that's the problem. Uh, so if you're a free player, your crests are gated on time. So if you pay, you can run as many dungeons as you can afford. Uh, simply put, paid players just get more gems faster, giving them a statistical advantage in PVP over free players. And if that were all, that'd be pretty bad. You know, that's like, that's pay to win, kind of put a stamp on it, but that's not all. We're not done. The grindy monetization void goes so much deeper. Way, way too deep. Uh, legendary gems also, <laughs> I hate this so much. I hate describing mobile games, I hate it. Also have <laughs> star ratings, because of course they do. Uh, rare crests will only ever drop a one star legendary gem. If you want better legendary gems, you gotta use a, uh, it's so stupid. Uh, if you want better legendary, I don't know what mathematician figures this shit out. If you want better legendary gems, you gotta use a legendary crest. So not only can paid players get gear faster, but they can access an entire tier of gear quality that won't even drop 
for the free players. All right, so even when you're using a paid crest, the drop rate for a five-star legendary gem is only 4.5%. But wait a minute, Bruce, what the hell is that? Why are there question marks there? <laughs> This is where it gets really good. Yeah, this is back. awesome. Uh, and this is all in quotes. A five, quote, star, quote, gem is just a gem that has a maximum potential of five stars. Oh my gosh. It may drop with all five. If a five star gem drops, there's actually a 1% chance that it will be a five out of five star gem. This is the worst. Uh, <laughs> that makes the functional drop rate for an actual, real five-star legendary gem, just 0.045%, or the odds are one in 2,222. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, let's, let's roll the math up. Legendary crests cost 160 eternal orbs, and the best exchange rate, if you buy the most, is 72 orbs per dollar, which converts to $2.22 per legendary crest. US dollar. So if you have to run 2,222 dungeons for a probable, probable drop at $2.22 each, the projected cost for a single five-star legendary gem is $4,937. God damn. $5,000 for a single gem. Okay, uh, all right. So while there's a mercy system in place to guarantee a question mark out of five-star gem drop after 50 runs, uh, there is no mercy system <laughs> guaranteeing a five out of five star gem. So five grand is just a probable prediction. It may not happen. As proof of this, streamer Quinn69 is currently on a crusade to get a five out of five star gem, spending almost $6,000 uh, US at the time of writing and not getting one. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty intense stream too. Loaded with memes, Quinn says it's meant to draw attention to how bad the monetization is, but get an awful lot of views in, in the in the offing too so hey that's online content baby reddit user shadearg also points out that with a 0.45 percent drop rate diablo mortal is several times more stingy than other games that are considered pretty stingy with their drops like rage shadow legends and summoner's war which drop their rarest materials at 0.5 percent and 0.35 percent respectively all right so there's a few cherries on top here <laughs> as if the explanation wasn't a cherry on top uh, you can upgrade the star rating of a five-star gem, but you gotta feed it a higher star gem for it to gain that rank. So gems drop unbound. So if you do get one of these ultra rare question mark out of five legendary gems, whatever, you can go right to the auction house, which of course <laughs> Diablo Immortal has. Uh, Immortal is a game where even gear with a sub 5% drop rate is also an invitation to spend even more money, which is crazy. Yeah, and all this doesn't even account for gem resonance, which is the ultimate like grind forever mechanic. And also again, invitation to just keep chilling out money. But that that seems to be, as near as we can see right now, the whole point of end game Diablo Immortal. You put some money in, you get some legendary gems out, and then you sell those gems on the auction house to other players for the same currency, platinum, that you can turn around and buy the gems you want with. Then again, wagering money for valuable returns sounds a whole lot like gambling, uh, with the always desperate catch-all that video game companies always make that you can't convert any of those resources back to US dollar or just real world currency in general. It's been $6,000 and hasn't gotten a gem yet and he can't get that back, that's it, it's gone. It's all invested, Bruce. It's invested in Diablo Immortal Futures. He's got all no. that gear. He's got it all. Invested. He just has to sell it. It's not stocks. <laughs> well, there are little stock arrows actually on the auction house. They do show you the percentage change of like oh, commodities gosh. like gems. All right, so let's throw it in reverse and back all the way out of this, just this, the worst gem setup in the world. Uh, the high level takeaways that paid players will have better gear in a PVP setting, of course. Uh, if you're a free to play player, your crests and thus chances at getting high level gear are capped by time because you're not paying. Uh, paying players get more drops, better drops, and can capitalize on the game's mercy system faster as many times as they want. Yeah, reading through comments on Reddit though, most people seem to agree that whales and paid players have a noticeable and fundamental advantage over free players at the moment. Ignathos sums it up pretty well writing the quote, a coordinated free to play team would be extremely disadvantaged against eight random super whales. Other players have completely accepted this monetized video game hellscape apocalypse though. 
such as Hyperactive Toast, who is sopping up all those gamer tears with disposable income. Once enough time goes by, it's possible that all the whale runoff dribbling into the auction house will make feasible PvP builds inexpensive in the long run. But from a design perspective, the bottomless monetized grind it just feels gross. Everybody everybody agrees it's disgusting. I mean, we all, I think both Lawrence and I definitely think it's gross. It's it's tacky. It's distasteful. Yeah. And it, it also is just so intrusive into the free experience. I mean, I get it. People got to pay their bills. And I am, I'm totally okay with throwing, like for a game of that quality, you know, five years ago, that would have cost $30 if at, at a bargain. So if you think about it that way, if you're getting like an air quotes $30 game for free, why not put that money aside to like grease the wheels a little bit and have a better time? That's if you trust yourself to not, you know, tip over into full, I'm addicted and bank accounts empty. Wife left me, house mortgage territory. I think that's a lot of people seem afraid that there's a demon lurking within. They don't trust themselves to just step away. Do you get it? A demon? Oh. Diablo? Oh, gotta contain it. A crystal. So I'll keep my money. But that's the thing, Bruce. Yeah, pe people, not people on the internet, normal people are having fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good. We, we played it. It's, it's a great Diet Diablo 3 that I was enjoying with friends. It was fun. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised at how much of that Diablo experience carried over. Now, I can have my personal qualms with Diablo as a skill-based game or whatever, but this is a really good experience that I think will entertain a lot of people. And this is a point that's nearly unanimous with everyone that's played the game. It's actually really fun to play. All the gameplay techniques that make ARPGs so like sticky and just serotonin releasing, it's all here and it's all in really good form. Razor tuned, you know, the blizzard polish, I guess, is here in full display. Popping enemies is fun. The art and the animations were all fantastic. The voice work is so good. The music's great. It's all hitting really high marks. That's kind of the counter argument to all this gem bullshit. Uh, the game's fun. <laughs> Most casual players, they just won't ever see this, that the gem stuff. So you, you really, even, they don't even need to care about it. So the number of stars on their legendary gem, it kind of doesn't matter because they're free to play players and they're having fun. Uh, it's possible to simply enjoy the game as a free and premium mobile experience. Maybe flatten a couple of riffs with your buds after work, carry on living life. I mean, doesn't sound so bad. That's what we did, and it was fun. I didn't spend any money. For now, Bruce. For now. Till Blizzard gets in those neurons and rewires you to make you a a paid shill drone. Oh, they're going to get me. Yeah, you got to chase those leaderboards. The first time you play PvP and you get flattened by a solid gold player who descended from Mount Olympus, you're going to change your tune. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, just, I'm staying away from PvP. That's my answer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The problem is in this context, free. The game is free because it's subsidized by whales who spend a lot of money, which it can get troubling when you consider all the techniques that are designed to like reach into your brain and just connect those neurons and make you spend money. Oh, purple pants. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Not to get too uh, existential and philosophical, but that's kind of the way the whole real world is. <laughs> So yeah. you just have to really learn to have self-control. I know it sucks because video games are, you know, generally meant for people that are younger, and that's the problem. Is that this could look like they're preying on the on the young and the weak. Uh, in this context, Blizzard has definitely crossed the line. They can never walk back with Diablo Immortal ever. Um, pay to win is bad, but it's it's not just that. Diablo Immortal also has everything else that trashy monetized games do. We've seen it for years. We know what it is. Every last trick in the book is in this game. Yeah, daily rewards that take you into the store, just like yeah. UI flows that get used to tapping the buttons to buy stuff. It's it's all here and it's, it's probably the most intense I've ever seen it. But I like tracking that stuff from an academic standpoint. Historically though, Blizzard Entertainment used to be a developer that everyone could trust based on their brand name alone to release quality products that respected the player. We spent this money, we worked really hard on this thing, put a lot of content in it, super well well designed, skill-based game, all that stuff. Immortal is still well made, but you just can't escape that creepy feeling that fundamentally Blizzard has shifted away from making games that are fun and respect the intelligence of the player, the games that want to control and manipulate them. Weirdly enough, that's kind of the way I felt about their matchmaking in their PvP games for a, quite a while. Uh, Hearthstone, Overwatch, I've always kind of had that feeling and it's made me not want to play Blizzard games, strangely. So uh, they're bringing that Diablo and it's, it sucks. Um, so this is the company that just five years ago published this whole cheeky video promoting StarCraft II going free to play. Your grandfather didn't give his life just so his grandson could pay money to be good at something. They were, you know, making fun of free to play monetized games. Yeah, it didn't take long, did it? For longtime fans of the studio, Immortal is, it's just a death knell you can't unring. You know, pay to win. Once you've done it, 
and you've done it enthusiastically with your whole chest, it's it's there. Blizzard's gone full corpo. That's just it. Demo Diablo Immortal's the proof. I mean, they probably have been for a while. A lot of people in World of Warcraft have been ringing that alarm for a while, saying like, hey, the design here is starting to shift away from like fun content to gated timers that force us to log in just so you guys get your metrics. That's not how this should be. And yeah, now we have Immortal, a game that seems entirely driven by metrics. It is the way it goes, unfortunately. I mean, you know, Activision Blizzard, it's right there in the title. Uh, so what's the answer? Well, you just go ahead and pour one out for Blizzard Entertainment, because you can always just not play this game. It's free to play, or it's mobile, just don't touch it. Reddit users suggest Grim Dawn, Path of Exile, Lost Ark. Those are action RPG alternatives that are far more generous with their drops and content. And I mean, you know, they might cost you 20 bucks or something, but they're fun. And just as a disclosure, I have done sponsored streams for Path of Exile before. So I didn't want that to seem too weird since I am writing the script. Didn't want it to seem like... No, people agree that Path of Exile is a really, really good game. It has been for years. I'm one of them, but they've also paid me. So I just wanted to make that clear. They never paid me, Lawrence. They never paid me. <laughs> and yeah, being paid regardless, at the end of the day, you can always just shrug and play it anyway and have fun. That works too. If you trust yourself to do it, and if you don't see that as being a tacit uh, acknowledgement and support of the techniques being used in this game. Yep, it's a- uh... What do you think about that? Do you think playing Diablo Immortal is sanctioning? It's saying it's okay, Blizzard, I can forgive all the rest of it because you made some monsters blow up. I think about this a lot because I had this conversation with my chat a lot when I stream. And I've been watching Autumn get addicted to a game called Merge Dragon, which is a, which is a, a mobile game. It's just literally a mobile game. And there are so many of these gotcha mobile games that people enjoy. Autumn loves that video game. And people are gonna love Diablo Immortal. And Autumn hasn't spent that much money on Merge Dragons. Uh, I haven't spent any money on Diablo Immortal and I've enjoyed it. And it, it's, it really rides the line between like, well, are you gonna spend money and enjoy it? Or are you just gonna enjoy it and have some self-control? And I'm not saying that as to as like insult people that are spending money on Diablo Immortal. I'm not. Uh, it's because it can get predatory. We know that. Um, and it's worrisome when we get to the, the predatory, uh, like, you know, areas of video games, but that exists everywhere in real life. Um, so it's strange. I don't want to sanction this and say, ah, you know what, buyer beware, whatever. Uh, they're gonna do whatever they want. But at the same time, be fucking careful where you spend your money, everybody. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's my advice. The manipulating people who might be prone to gambling or addiction, very bad. Manipulating kids, very bad. Like, objectively bad. Beyond that, Absolutely. when it comes to how adults want to spend their money, it gets a little fuzzier. Um, I tend to think that we've always exchanged money for fake pleasures in video games. It's all an illusion, and it always has been. If you, if you think otherwise, then you might get a little too over-invested in, into the digital realm. Uh, with that in mind, Companies have always made products with creative decisions that are driven by getting money, always. Some of your favorite games were probably crafted around tailoring it to a specific audience that would be happy with that purchase. It just happened to be you. And if for Diablo Immortal, maybe it's not you anymore. And that might be the sting is that, is that it's not being tailored for you in the way that you want. But there is a group out there it is being tailored for. You just have to make your peace with not being part of it or maybe not having I don't know, just like a trust fund that you can burn to be good at Diablo Immortal with. So the thing I always come back to is while this may seem bad and it may be, it may be a troubling turn for the industrialization of the gaming industry, there's so many other games out there that are not made that way, still made the old fashioned way, churned by hand on the farm every morning cr from creators who are willing to make the thing they want to make and are willing to accept that it's not going to make $3 billion. And it, it takes a little extra effort to find those games, but they're there. They're still there and they're still being made in, in huge supply. So you can rest easy knowing that corruption hasn't taken over the entire video game industry, but chasing the dollar is there because it's there everywhere. There's always a company chasing the buck and they're willing to make the product that will get the most bucks. And that's the whole point of coming to work. So mm, it sucks, but it's here and it was always going to come here. You don't have to play it. That's right. Just don't play it. And, and, and that's always my advice. Instead, play a video game that both Lawrence and I love, Vampire Survivors. It's $3 on Steam and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it is so much fun and you never have to spend another dime. Spend, a, spend three bucks on Vampire Survivors, support the dev, you'll love it, and you won't feel like uh, it's predatory. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like Hyper Diablo. Uh, it's only like four buttons to play and uh, yeah, there's no gems. Actually, there are gems, but they're awesome gems. There are gems, but they're free. They're free. They come in the game. <laughs> hey, 
Speaking of gems, we lucked out. We got these five out of five legendar legendary patrons <laughs> for Inside Games. Faisal Sharif, uh, Leonard Asp, Chris, uh, Christian Morgan Anderson, and Rob Simme. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Bruce, because I drew a couple of legendary supporters just this morning. Whoa! I know, it's crazy. Stre streak of luck here. Baron 5X, Chase T, Goo Binky, and Vermin McCon. Thank you all very much for your very generous support. How much did you spend to get those supporters? Like 10 grand, 13, 15 grand? $80,000, Bruce. Okay, all right. I didn't even think about it. I I just saw some nice supporters. A veil fell in front of my eyes, and now I'm just surrounded by burned up credit cards and the bank's calling and I don't know what to do. Wyatt, <laughs> you got me. Take my house. 